To artists who you may know and some who you may not, today we're going to be taking a look at artists who have not hit that mainstream wave yet and who they are. This is part two of the underground rap iceberg, so if you missed the last one, the link will be in the description so you can catch up. And if you like this type of content, I'm going to need you to sub up right now and like the video. If I miss somebody you think needs to be in this iceberg, let me know down below so I can add them. All right, let's jump in. As usual, I'm always going to start out with my absolute favorite from each tier, and it took me a minute to figure out who that would be, and it ended up being a very close tie between David Shawty and JPEG Mafia. David Shawty is from Seattle and was raised around music, as his dad played a few instruments and he learned how to play guitar when he was just 7 years old. He started rapping in high school, not taking it too serious until he started getting into plug with music, as it was pretty prevalent and in its earlier days on SoundCloud, so he began making his own. Listening to his newer music, the contrast between that and his music from just 3 years ago is basically not night and day. His older music consisted of a much lazier delivery with a lot of production from Nila World members, and a song that brought allies on him, Honda, which is known as a Plug. classic. Today, I would say his music is most definitely not for everyone, as he does insane vocal chops pitching up and lowering his voice, and the most experimental type songs you've ever heard to where you wouldn't even consider it music. David can literally do just about anything and make anything sound good, and he's extremely talented and versatile. To truly understand what I mean, you kind of just have to listen to it for yourself, but like I said, it's not for everyone. Either way, I'm a huge fan of it, and I love all of it. Space Ghost Perp introduced me to Slime Cedo back in 2017 when he reposted one of his songs on SoundCloud and with the tomfoolery he had with Thousand Band Fawny. Slime Cedo is just so important to so many artists' careers that it's not even like funny. He was raised in Prince George County, Maryland, then he moved to Georgia. At just 13, he was kind of already in the streets, so it's pretty prevalent in his music. His first song he ever dropped solo was called Yo No Say back in 2016, and it genuinely isn't that bad for a first song. For years, Slime Cedo has been coming combining the roots of the DMV with that Georgia sound and it makes him a pretty unique artist where most people just kind of enjoy how well it flows together. After his first mixtape Slime BZ dropped, he had eyes on him already because it was amazing for the time it dropped and it was in 2017. He worked with iconic producers on that tape such as Eddie Gianni and Mexico Dro. Um, reading on Reddit, some people say he's like repetitive, but I don't know. Me personally, I enjoy his music and I love how gritty it is. This man has been locked up more times than you can count though, so I kind of just hope he stays out of jail and just keeps making music. Black Cray, aka Sick Boy Rari from Richmond, Virginia, aka Flexico, is, as usual, a huge inspiration to so many artists and so many trends were set by him specifically. He says he knew he was different when he was younger because he couldn't match clothes in school and he dressed quote unquote weird. He started making music and dropping on MySpace, which I tried to find on the way back machine, but it was all gone pretty much. He started Terrorist Posse in 2011 with him and his friend, which eventually turned into what we all know as Goth Money Records. He's collaborated with Blake. Space Ghost Perp, Chapo, and working on Dying Members. I would honestly just say that if you listen to Black Cray, you kind of have a really good understanding that music is more of an art form than just a listening tool. As in most of his music, if you want to know what he's saying, you're going to have to use genius. Overall, he's still going strong to this day. Shouts out to Flexico, still struggling, still shining. He's a GOAT. Hey, doing research on JPEG Mafia, I just found out this man's real name is Barrington. Like, Barrington. That's crazy. JPEG Mafia began producing while in the military and formed a group called Ghost Pop while he was in Japan. After he was honorably discharged in 2015, he moved to Baltimore and began using the name JPEG Mafia for his solo releases. I seriously wish I could go into a lot of detail, but it's just an iceberg. He puts a lot of his political views in his music, like with his lyrics, but if you listen to his production and what he's really saying in his wordplay, it's honestly insane. He's definitely a very experimental artist, and I kind of hate to say this because he's gone on record and said he hates being compared to them, but he's on the same level as like Death Grips when it comes to experimentation, who we'll also get into. All in all, he's amazing. He's still going strong to this day, and I wish he would just drop more music. I understand that he probably just kind of has to perfect the craft before he drops it, so. His sound is way too refreshing, and he's a legend. Lil B the Bass God is undoubtedly a huge legend. Throughout his whole career, he's just been himself. He came up in 2004 in the group known as The Pack, dropping songs that you would honestly think came out today. He's pretty much the first real YouTube rapper as he was uploading his songs all the way back in 2007. Ah! 
Sorry. Clams Casino worked with him back then as well and just honestly made songs that were just ahead of its time. He's mostly just known now for how unapologetically himself he is. He literally recorded over 3,000 songs. I am not lying, I promise you. Look it up. I'm leaving out a lot of stuff, but just understand anytime Lil B is mentioned, legend has to be a part of that conversation. Thank you, Bass God. Diego Money is an artist from Glendale, Texas, where he was raised by his mother and his grandmother. Inspired by the Migos and Chief Keef, he began rapping in 2013, and since then, he's been a staple for the plug scene in underground rap. He was rapping on plug type beats way before most people were, and to this day, he still does. Collaborating with producers like Mexico Dro, Stupid Cool, and Polo Boy Shotty, just to name a few, he stamped on SoundCloud as one of the artists that was ahead of the plug curve. When he moved to LA, he says after three shows, he already had his wave. Probably what most people know him for is his feature on Take A's song, God of Blast, even though I'm pretty sure that's his song. I don't know. Shouts out to him though, he's amazing. Icy Twat is one of the most influential producers and rappers of our generation. Oh my god. Being a part of the whole Divine Council wave early on is a huge part of who I am to this day. These guys made the smoothest music. Icy Twat is from Chicago and he began making beats when he was just 14 years old. His music is what I would classify as futuristic, but it still has like melodies and flows that kind of remind you of the 90s and the early 2000s. He's worked with artists such as ASAP Rocky, Cardi, and even Tyler the Creator. There's not too much information on who he is as a person, but with his drops over the years and his producer credits, he's made himself a legend. Silk Money is an artist from Richmond, Virginia, who was also a part of the Divine Council and had been since 2013 and is on the same line with Icy Chua because he has that refreshing but classic delivery on most of his songs. He sold stuff in Richmond up until he met the rest of the Divine Council and from that point on it was just history. He was actually signed to Epic Records and actually received an advance for an undisclosed amount of money, but they weren't able to recuperate it and ended up leaving the label. His song My Partner Them took off on TikTok seemingly out of nowhere and to this day, he will not sign to any labels that reach out to him because of his past experience with Epic Records. He says he's heavily inspired by Jill Scott and he continues to make music to this day. Uh, I really want to see more from him. Lucifer is an artist from... Uh Okay, not too much is known about him as a person, as he's done zero interviews, so I just scrounged up what information I could kind of find. Most I can say about him without getting into all the weird stuff is that he made Sigilcore. Sigilcore is credited by fans and Reddit on Urban Dictionary as a subgenre of rap which is associated with the devil, sigils, and resonates with dark magic and voodoo hex type music, or as TikTok comments call it, Roblox music. It's closely along the lines of that weird like mix of hyper pop and dark trap. I would personally say that Space Ghost Purp was one of the ones who really originated the sound, but I digress. Lucifer has had many of his songs go viral on TikTok, including Body Parts and Cursed Emeralds, which has been sampled into the ground, just to name a few. His music is like many others on this iceberg, not for everybody, and as in some songs, he's literally putting a curse on you, quote unquote, and just whispers over this weird, satanic ass beat. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm a fan of it. Overall, he drops a lot of music, and if you wanna get into it, fair warning, it's weird, but it's good. Wi-Fi God is an artist from Washington, D.C. who started rapping back in 2012 when he was a part of Portal Boys. He says the music scene in D.C. was ahead of its time and he was a part of that wave. He started out trying to get his music pushed by going to colleges and throwing shows and performing his songs, but he said he never really got too much love in his own city in the beginning of his career. Earl Sweatshirt actually told him he listened to one of his earlier albums literally every day and he actually brought him out of the show back in 2019 in Baltimore. Since we know about Sigilcore now, I can kind of say that he he has elements of that subgenre and mixed it with like cloud trap. He's worked with Black Cray, Oogie Mane, and most of Reptilian Club Boys, which we'll get into later. He still makes music to this day, and it's ahead of its current time. Ghostman is known as one of the most popular alternative rappers, but he hasn't really been a rapper for too long, I would say, as he's past the point of being a rapper because he's mostly on like a metal standpoint now. As he used to be in a hardcore band back in 2014, he was early on that metal rap subgenre trap metal oh my god i hate using that terminology the type of beats he raps on is like otherworldly like have you ever watched the anime devil man cry baby remember those last couple of episodes where the world was pretty much ending ghost main's music would like be the background music for all of that as most of the time elements behind his production are more industrial than rap related he was a part of the now defunct rap group schema posse and it was an interesting art but with his style of music i kind of figured that wouldn't last too long i would also just like to say as far as talent goes 
promos, his delivery is insane. Like he's up there with like Ruby from SB, Eminem, trust me. He raps really fast and has like insane wordplay. Don't let the knockoff Marilyn Manson look fool you. This nigga can rap like better than most mainstream artists. Echo 2K is a British Swedish singer and model and member of Drain Gang. His music is very experimental and it's like a mix of pop and rap. He used to go by the name Malcolm Six and it took him a while to drop his own project that everyone now knows is E. The project was known amongst Gen Z as a classic and granted I would kind of agree it's an okay project. He has a cult like fan base and as most of y'all know I'm not really the biggest fan of Drain Gang stuff so you know. Moving on. Joey is a rapper from Massachusetts who I definitely feel like I should have moved a tier lower because he's not super well known yet, but he's on his way and he's ahead of the curve for sure. Like everyone is going to start copying this man two years from now, watch. If you guys remember Trill Funk back in 2016, he started uploading his music and videos there and had a sound that kind of reminded me of Hella Sketchy, rest in peace. And it was refreshing, but not really too original at the time. It definitely took him a few years to make his own wave, but by 2020, I would say he was definitely there. His song Garbanzo blew up on TikTok because DJ Smokey has this insane producer tag that a lot of kids found entertaining and intriguing. Legalized nuclear bombs. What most people who heard that sound didn't know is that the whole song itself is actually amazing. Joey mostly raps about his extremely heavy drug use and combines genres that extend way beyond just rap. As in his song Muskrat, there's horror elements and honestly it isn't even just rapping, like the production and the sound design gives it a more of an art form feeling than just a song, especially with the music video being creepy as hell. Joey is what I would consider future music as he never really tries too hard when he makes a song and yet it's better than a lot of new way of underground artists because it's actually original. Isaiah TG is an artist from Ohio who creates an atmosphere when you listen to him. Like, I'm not even sure how I would explain it. You just kind of get this transcendent feeling when you listen to Isaiah. Kind of like, if you've ever thought about astral projecting, I feel like that's the feeling his music conveys. He was a member of Slay World at one point and not even getting into every single beef this man has had. Overall, the music itself is otherworldly and definitely futuristic. He was a pioneer of that echo reverb delay effect on vocals that everyone thinks Summer started on RNS, but Isaiah was doing it first. Most of his songs are punch in freestyles as he says he's never wrote a song a day in his life. When he left Slay World, he mainly said it's because their internet personas would be completely different from how they were in real life. He's taken many breaks from making music and says he would quit multiple times, but overall Isaiah is amazing and I'm just excited to hear more from him. So there isn't a lot of information about Slay With Me, aka Suxi, uh, because they haven't done too many interviews. So I just kind of went straight to them and asked them a couple of questions. And he was actually kind of enough to answer them. Slay With Me is an artist from Chicago that would be in that dark pop, hyper pop trap category. Oh my God, this shit is so cringy to talk about. He got into making beats at first and the beats were a little different since no one was hopping on them. He actually just decided to hop on them himself. He had a song go extremely viral on TikTok named Matt Masquerade, where most of the comments I found about the song, people think it's a female because he just has a really soft voice. But I think the virality of that song really just came from how hard the beat was and the lyrics. 2023, the year y'all gonna hear and learn more about me. This transcend just music. I'm trying to speak to people's hearts. We finna start a whole community. And I hope to see more from him. I really like him. Now, Van Pleek is insane. I mean, really, really insane. Van Pleek is an artist from Atlanta, Georgia, who, yes, we're not going to lie, takes a bit of inspiration from Cardi. That's undeniable. But they are from the same place, so we can't really leave that out. Also, he puts his own original spin on his music. Taking music serious since 2020, he's grown exponentially sound-wise, and he's got a lot of tapes and albums that can't really be found unless you do some, like, Travel or Ross type of research. He's one of those artists where you can immediately tell his roots are from Atlanta, and he has that gritty dark like nighttime sound with the whole vampire aesthetic behind him which I'm not knocking the kids like it I kind of like it it is what it is to be completely honest I'm not sure why he hasn't hit that mainstream wave yet because I feel like he has a song for everyone but also he said he wouldn't want to sign because he just wants to make the music that he wants to make and leave it at that shout out to him because I've been listening to him for about three years now and he's actually grown I asked him a couple of questions and here was his response some shit that niggas don't really know about me for real for real like as far as my interest and shit uh I'm really into like comics and shit like that real real like nerdy shit for real for real 
low-key a nerd outside of music and shit. The music I got into, shit, I got into the type of music that I'm making now. Like, when I was, like, 14, 15, I used to listen to, like, pop shit before then. Mostly pop shit, for real, for real. And then I got, like, a... Uh, like an iPod, and then I got like some Chief Keef on that shit. Somebody on, somebody in school put me onto that nigga, and then I started listening to like heavy Chief Keef for like damn near four or five years straight. That was really all I was listening to, and then I started getting into like Thug, and then I started getting into like Future also. I mean, of course, I listened to like Wayne and like Drake and shit way, way back in the day, but like not, not through my own like you know shit. It was like on the radio type shit. Yeah, started off with just listening to Chief Keef in high school and shit. Shit, I realized how much bigger I got in for real, for real when I started traveling other states and shit. And motherfuckers was like, oh shit, like you vamp leak, whatever, whatever. Of course, I don't go by that no more. But yeah, niggas be like, oh, you vamp leak and shit. Like, that's crazy. I heard about you. Goddamn, from this or from that. Like, hella motherfuckers just be like, I heard about you type shit. So that's really how. Shit, if I wasn't making music, bro. I'd probably be designing video games, making clothes full time. Yeah, that's another thing that I'm really into. I'm really into uh, fashion and shit. So an intro for Seth Shallow Waterboys really is not that necessary. I mean, honestly, they solidified themselves as the most likely like ahead of time influential groups of all time. I don't care what anybody says. The influence on the underground with these guys is insane as these guys pretty much inspired everyone, literally. I see the glazing comments coming now and you know what? I am glazing, I really am. I don't care. Set Shallow Water Boys is a group that formed back in 2013 consisting of Eddie Baker, Bones, Xavier Wolf, and Chris Travis. These guys combined their groups into one huge powerhouse and they were unstoppable for a minute. Sesh being a group of designers, producers, and artists were linked together with Water Boys by Chris Travis, Healthy Boys by Eddie Baker, and Hollow Squad by Xavier Wolf. They collaborated on a lot of music together and to truly understand why they're so legendary, it's just something you had to be there for. Or what makes even more sense is when Xavier Xavier said this. It's gotten so like, like deep now that there's underground music listeners out there mm -hmm. now that don't like know us type shit, but they, they, they know underground. Like they, mm -hmm. they, they were, you know, they got pulled into it by some other random artist, but it's like a, it's like connecting the dots. It started with us. Then it went here with these kids mm -hmm. and then here with these kids and then here with these kids. And by the time these kids started listening, they yeah. only know these two kids, like mm -hmm. these two groups, and they don't know where it like started type shit. So it's like, but then some like more often than not, like there'll be that one person come along like, oh, you know who started all this shit, right? You know who, you know who the fuck that nigga that, got that this shit going. Niggas, like, yeah, like, yo, yeah, bro, like, you know who really did this You shit, know who really man. got this SoundCloud shit popping for these kids. Like. Unfortunately, because of issues between Chris Travis and Xavier Wolf, it's unlikely this group will ever fully rekindle. But at the time, these guys were unstoppable and their mark is made. Glock 40 Spaz, or GO4 as I'll call him for this video, is an artist from Decatur, Georgia, whose delivery is the carrying factor in his artistry, along with the beat selection by ATL Sensei, uh, I think that's his name. Like, he is insane. Every beat he makes is so catchy. He's pretty new to the underground, but he's made his way up very, very fast thanks to TikTok and a rumor that he signed with Opium, but we definitely don't even know that, we just have this tweet. He began dropping music on SoundCloud as a kid and says when he first started, he used heavy auto-tune as D Savage used it frequently and he says D Savage is the reason he even started rapping. Cause like really the nigga who really made me want to start rapping got on D Savage. D Savage? Yeah when I heard him I'm like, yeah. like yeah this nigga on that auto-tune killing that shit. Some of his songs sounds like he literally recorded them like with Apple headphones but I feel like there's a beauty in the rawness of that. He's been on the rise still and I believe him and his associates at EBG Records have a very bright future ahead of them. His ass just needs to stay out of jail. Mm -hmm. 
Raider Clan is a collective started by Space Ghost Perp that originated all the way back in 2010. Absolutely would say this was the start of what we now know as the New Age Underground. I know some of you nerds in the comments are going to disagree and that's fine. Just remember, this is my opinion. I don't care what you have to say. Raider Clan originated in Florida and just about anyone you can think of that's been rapping since 2009 as an underground originator is a former member or tied with this group. Since Space Ghost Perp is on this iceberg, I won't too much focus on who he is as a person. We'll just kind of get into that later. Space Ghost Perp would go on to drop Blackland Radio 666, and with eyes on him, he accumulated members such as ASAP Rocky, Denzel Curry, Xavier Wolf, Chris Travis, Young Simi, Jay Green, Eddie Baker, Lofty 305, and much more. Raider Clan had a dark aesthetic about them that was just kind of intriguing to like the alternative youth at the time, as around this time, what most people were accustomed to was Prudiger Arrow type wave that was making moves across America while these guys wore black, barely seemed to smile, and had just gritty dark lyrics that ranged across each artist artist discography and collaborations with other members. Now the group as a whole didn't really last too long, becoming defunct in 2013 after only three years of being active, but they still solidified themselves as pretty much almost the most legendary underground rap collective of all time. Yeah. I said almost. These guys got popular when social media was honestly at its peak. Tumblr, Vine, early Instagram, and early YouTube were key factors. Tumblr probably playing the biggest role. As by this point on the internet, Tumblr was a place for just heavy mood boarding, which in short terms is just for the aesthetic, and people appreciated their independence. The downfall of Raider Clan is by almost all accounts at the fault of SGP, as he beefed with many different artists, even his own co-members as ASAP Rocky, Denzel Curry, and people who even weren't a part of it, such as X, Puya, and Ronnie J. God, lots of Florida going on here. Overall, these guys' influence ranges across mainstream music media down to somebody on SoundCloud with just zero followers. These guys are legends, and it's undeniable. Another legendary collective, but not as well known, is Midnight Society. My god, I was so excited to talk about these guys. Originally starting with just Kamiata and the amazing producer, The Virus and Antidote, these guys formed what is probably my favorite collective of the underground, Midnight Society, with members such as Rare Akuma, Fuck It, Young Bambi, Trippy the Kid, KP, Young Zila, Original God, Kel Kaluminati, the list just goes on. These guys as a collective were a real deal powerhouse starting back in 2015. These guys are like a spider web to most of the underground as the virus produced for Bones on Rest in Peace, X, Chris Travis, and Cybeer, aka Syringe. Rare Akuma even worked with SB back in 2014. I mean, these guys were everywhere. These guys' flows worked very well together and they actually did a link up and dropped one of my favorite vlogs of all time, Dead in LA. Without getting into the beefs, just understand these guys were so amazing together and the time they had was just awesome. I wouldn't necessarily say they're defunct, as most of the artists still make music to this day, but some artists have either gone their separate ways or from the group or just don't even make music anymore. Overall, the time these guys had when they were on top was just something you really had to be there for. I truly miss these days. Reptilian Club Boys was an interesting collective that can be credited as the true start of Sidracore, but that's debatable. This group consisted of Diamonds on My Meat, High C, Cartier God, Lil Shine, Lazy God, Marcy Man, list goes on as usual. These guys were weird. In a good way though. I mean, these guys sampled old video games like Castlevania as their prod tags. They used really uplifting melodies all the way to extremely demonic type beats. In most of the artists across this roster, there is always a sense of laziness and heavy Space Ghost Perp influence in the vocals and the production. But they still have their own sense of style that they added to it that even new gen artists do to this day that these guys were doing all the way back in 2016. Unfortunately, they are now defunct, which is a common theme amongst these rap collectives. As for Pretty much the head of the group, Diamonds on My Meat, has very, very weird allegations and is definitely a confirmed like scammer. I mean, this man would drop merch and then people would buy it and he would just not ship it. Besides all that though, the music that they made was amazing. They all sort of still made music to this day though, but RCB is just definitely not a thing anymore. Side note, High C is literally one of the most talented artists of this generation. He does not get the love he deserves. Y'all need to listen to that man way more. 
Anand Banzai is a very, very private person who doesn't really share too much information about himself on the internet. Either way, his music is beautiful. He pitches his voice up extremely high and most of his songs are raps over new age cloud rap type beats and also makes what most people would be considered hyper pop, but not the bad kind, the good kind. He has a song for pretty much every mood and his music isn't for everyone, so don't go into it expecting something you've ever heard before. Since beginning in 2018, he's amassed over 20,000 followers on SoundCloud and he's still dropping music to this day and he's a very original artist and he's very versatile hopefully one day we'll learn more about him as a person but for now we just have his music and the story that it tells us Hook's Fine Ass is a rapper from California who started rapping in 2016. She calls herself Hook because her stepsisters and her were in an R&B group that they created and she would write the hook for most of the songs, therefore coining the name Hook. She's extremely versatile and she's rapped over a plethora of different type beats. Her rise has been slow, but still a rise nonetheless. She's worked with Lil House Phone, BK The Ruler, and Booty Chain. <laughs> that name always makes me laugh. Just to name a few, and her style of delivery is very original to say at the least. She's still going strong to this day and still drops pretty versatile music and damn she's bad. Moving on. Gizmo is one of the biggest trap metal-esque artists on this iceberg and that's not to put him in a box as his biggest song is more of a soft slower song than he actually has with Lil Peep but it would be unreasonable to not include the fact that he's a huge pioneer in the earlier days of SoundCloud trap metal. From Jamestown, Rhode Island, Gizmo was searching for ways to upload his music for free and stumbled across SoundCloud. Weirdly enough, he says the reason he started rapping more aggressively was because of Waka Flocka and honestly, I can see that. Squad! He gets his name from the movie Gremlins because his favorite character was obviously Gizmo. Because he listened to mainstream rap and heavy metal, he ended up combining the two in his delivery. And when he moved to LA, the rest was pretty much history. He was tied in with Midnight Society doing many collabs with members from that collective and he's been rising ever since. He doesn't drop too much as he likes to perfect his craft, but either way, he's goaded. Oliver Francis has had a very interesting rise and is stamped as a legend, but not for the reason you may think. See, when I first discovered Oliver Francis, he was just making beats on SoundCloud and wasn't putting any vocals behind anything. It was actually when I first made a SoundCloud, his beat was the first thing I ever heard, which was over nine years ago. He had an interview on No Jumper that is absolutely terrible and does him zero justice to his work and his history, so I'll try and get into it. As a janitor, he realized he wanted a way to make it out of his current situation at the time, and he began began to rap back in 2014. Making beats at first, he brought up a name for himself, and after he started to rap on those beats, he gained a lot of traction, especially after he dropped music videos for his songs that would be considered the earlier days of cloud rap, as he rapped about lean, bait, things of that nature. His music videos actually racked up like millions of views, and he became a legend in the early days of cloud rap. To this day, he still makes music, and he's definitely switched up his style, so I don't really too much listen to him now, but his evolution is pretty cool, and he's been at it for like years now. Shouts out to him. Devstax is a producer and rapper from Springfield, Massachusetts, and he says he never really related to the music scene from where he's from because Springfield and that whole music scene, they're on like a whole, they're more like on like NBA young boy, like hood music type shit. So I feel like I'm really like a pioneer, like making my own lane. He began producing at first for people like Summers and Autumn, but as people didn't really get on his beats as much as he wanted to, he just began to hop on them himself. Inspired by Pierre Bourne, he keeps his delivery simplistic, and his style of sound is kind of that transcendent feeling that I was telling you about earlier. As most of his songs are uplifting with the melody, but it's mixed with like his drowsy flows, you get a sense through his music that he doesn't really try too hard, but his music is still great nonetheless. He's been steadily rising for about a few years, and after his biggest song, Wear Your Swag, he got way more eyes on him after it blew up on TikTok and he's been making waves that as an artist ever since and I'm excited to see what else he has. Funeral is an artist from North Carolina who is literally extremely slept on. This guy has literally never been brought up in too many talks about the underground, which is understandable because it's the underground. But in my honest opinion, he's like top 10 for most versatile artists in the true underground scene right now as he's done punk, hyper pop, indie music, and dark trap music. Not too much is known about him as he's only done one interview that I was able to pull some information from. He got inspiration from XXYYXX. If y'all know about that, y'all are G's. Flying Lotus, and that's how he got more so into hip hop type beats and actually started rapping. He actually started out making dubstep, but he said it was terrible, so that's why he moved towards hip hop. His originality in a sea of underground artists all basically copying each other really just needs to be discussed here because his beats are otherworldly as they 
they have such a gritty but uplifting sound about them. He has a very high pitched voice that he takes advantage of, which kind of allows him to really pull from different genres of music and apply it to his own. He's got almost 150 songs at the time of me recording this, and he's amassed almost 30,000 followers on SoundCloud since he started, and he's still going up and going strong. Shouts out the funeral. I love this man. Rodeo Glow is an artist from Virginia who is in the whole sigilcore scene. Not too much is known about who he is as a person, but after listening to a couple songs, it's kind of obvious to see why his name comes up as much as it does in the sigil scene, as it can be kind of hard to be too original in that scene, since everyone bites off of the same person for inspiration. But he kind of has his own original spin on it. He produces his own beats, and they're really good, and I just want to hear more from him. He's gas. Now, this is cheating because Jazz Butler is literally Lil Tracy, which I already talked about, but you kind of need to be a nerd to know about this, so I'm gonna put you on if you didn't already know. Jazz Butler is Tracy's actual government name and one of his earlier personas that he went by before the whole Soldier Witch and Yum Bruh era. At this point, he was more of a boom bap conscious rapper, taking huge inspiration from Nas, A Tribe Called Quest, and many other lyrical rappers. Jazz Butler as an era wouldn't last super long, as this was just a stage for the many evolutions that Tracy would go through as an artist, but there are about 200 songs you can find in the YouTube playlist if you want to hear what I'm explaining. Metro Zoo is a trio consisting of Lofty 305, Ruben Slick, and Freebase. These guys were really early pioneers in the beginning of Trap Underground for like Florida dating all the way back to 2007. They rapped over cloud rap type beats before it was even labeled cloud rap and they made songs that were ahead of the time. They're now defunct as they did separate in 2015 and they were basically just kind of like a subset of Raider Clan as they worked with most of the members of that collective. I feel like some songs they made had to have been jokes because listen to this. This. You know I sell drugs, whoa, you know I'm a thug You know I'm a thug, you know I'm a thug You know I sell drugs You know I sell drugs, whoa, you know I'm a thug You know I'm a thug, you know I'm a thug You know I sell drugs <laughs> Like there's no way. Either way, these guys were still goaded for the kind of music they made at the time they were making it. And I think the group honestly disbanded because everyone moved on from music that was initially a part of the group. Overall, this was an amazing era for Florida and I miss these days. Jay Storm is a rapper and producer from North Carolina whose story is kind of interesting because of where he ended up and how he got there. Jay Storm started making beats on FL all the way back in middle school, inspired by Speaker Knockers and Soldier Boy. And after he started getting better, he dropped his beats on SoundClick and got recognized by King Louie, who is a Chicago legend. Off of that one song he got with King Louie, G Herbo hopped on that song as well. The rest was history, as many Chicago artists from that point wanted him to send them beats as well. When he started rapping on his own beats, he got connected with Kevin. Gates and a plethora of other rappers. He's made his way through the underground and solidified himself as someone who can do both extremely well. He's garnered millions of plays on SoundCloud that he's produced and rapped on, so it's safe to say he is a legend in the underground scene. Consisting of Young Mojo, Alvin Abyss, 5G, and Morg, Five Finger Posse is super slept on. These guys are overlooked by mainstream hip hop and it's not even funny. They've worked with talents such as Forza, Filthy, Wi-Fi God, DP Beats, Lil Tracy, and a lot more. These guys are the people who your favorite new gen artists probably get inspiration from without even realizing it, as they made waves all the way back in 2014 doing things that people are doing today. Each member carries the group in their own way and they're actually still going strong to this day. My favorite project from anything related to these guys is 5G's Freezer Burn. These guys are legends for sure, and they were pretty early on the chopped and sopped wave that most kids use today without even knowing where it came from. These guys are amazing, so shouts out to Five Finger Posse. Definitely give them a listen. Hard Rock is an 18-year-old artist from Atlanta, Georgia who's very new in the scene, but he's already amassed almost 30,000 followers on Instagram, over 200,000 listeners on Spotify, and almost 15,000 on SoundCloud. At just the age of 17, he started making his own music inspired by Future and Young Thug. The type of beats he gets on are otherworldly, as these beats have samples that range from Linkin Park all the way to Deftones. His work ethic is insane as he's dropped three projects in 2022, and he's just got a crazy future ahead of him. Like, I literally can't get over the fact that this dude is 18 so shouts out to him so that was tiers three and four of the iceberg if you guys did enjoy please leave a like it means a lot to me and um hey this is some super random information so that actress from atlanta uh the girl who plays Ern's girlfriend did you know she doesn't shower that's that's crazy all right i'm out